Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're so grateful for seeing each of you today. And we are, as usual, grateful for all the hard work. And I can see behind that mask your wife getting you that look like, did you forget? I'm us husbands are trained to just read the eyes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Ashley. Hallelujah. We are so grateful to see each of you today. We are going to, uh, I won't say redo, but we are going to continue on our message, Where Are the Real Men? And this message has greater implications on all of us than most people realize. When I was doing this study, I was amazed at how God framed the world in such a way where you can look at the, thank you, the mindset and attitude of, of men and determine the condition of the world. I know that sounds odd, but listen to what the Bible says. Smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. God set up things in a certain way. And since he set these things up, there's been a lot of tinkering. You know, today people think they're smarter than God. They think that uh, uh, we don't need him anymore. And, and they come up with all kind of ideas about how it should be. But when God initially made the world, other than uh, all the creatures, when he got down to the business of appointing somebody to be head of the earth, even though he loved Adam and Eve, he sent a message. He said, I'm going to make the man first because I'm out to hold somebody responsible and I'm going to make man, then I'm going to make woman. Both of them are equally intelligent and equally talented. But God knew that there had to be an order. And what we are seeing today is that there's just a loss of uh, manliness, of men that will stand up and say, I'm going to be a good husband, a committed father, a dedicated leader. And there's confusion. Uh, much of what we've seen on the TV today is confusion confusing because they are showing a lot of men that you kind of strain into figure out whether they're men or not. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. And I'm going beyond homosexuality, even that's part of it, but there's a bigger problem than that. Because there are a lot of men that are not into that, but they're not quite into who God called them to be. Amen. Father, have your way in the word today. We thank you for Pastor and all the work he and Minister Rodney and Sister Ashley do to make these services possible. Thank you, Lord God, for dedicated individuals. We thank you, Lord, for the ensemble, how faithful they have been. We thank you for everybody that is attending today. And we ask that you would have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may wonder, well, now, what does this issue of where are the real men have to do with men. And, and I know when we think about men, there are all kind of versions of uh, uh, what makes a man a man. And, and, uh, and we have a, a message coming up titled, Where Are the Real Women? That's going to be an interesting message, very interesting. Hope I'm going to have some friends when I finish that. Amen. I don't want, I don't want to see funny looks over those, uh, 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 those masks now, but, but, but we're getting there. But the Bible gives us a story in Romans 1 that parallels uh, the book of Genesis, the 19th chapter. And in Romans, the first chapter, we're going to notice that what God is going to do is God is going to look at the issue of what it takes or what constitutes a real man. I know there's confusion on the subject for uh, 
number of different reasons, but God gives us clarity if we would but listen. And we're going to start today, and let me make sure that I have the right scriptures today, because sometimes I don't. But we're going to start today, uh, and uh, Pastor, I hope I got the right, y'all got the right one up. Let me see. Uh, okay, because I sent, uh, yeah, I give y'all a moment to, it, it, uh, the one I changed it to earlier this morning. Sometimes I send them th two or three different ones. And I, the last one I sent, uh, I'm not sure that they got that one or not. Because I changed something, I said a misspelled word. And I said, no, that's not how you spell that word. And I'm bad on spelling. So uh, I changed it at the last moment. And uh, the one that we're going to use, the second slide, will be Romans, the first chapter for the wrath. Okay, pastor's waving his hand up. He said they got it. And that's my fault, not their fault, okay? Right. Guess how many different versions of the message I sent to them in less than uh, 12 hours? Three. <laughs> I sent them one last night and two this morning. And then, I, and then I have the nerve to say, use this one. Uh, honey and I went to a, a, a service last night, and, and, and in the service, a good friend of mine, he's moving into another building. And, and, uh, he, and I said, well, he said, well, I want you all to come because we are going to dedicate our, the building. I said, okay, nice building. I was glad for him. And honey, I got that. I said, what should we wear? He said, I said, well, most people are going to wear suits. And he said, well, some might, but you can kind of, yeah, that'll be fine. So honey and I showed up last night to see my good friend, and I was all dressed up. Honey was all dressed up. We walked in there, and it was a poop, a poop, a poop, a poop, a poop. Every group in there was rapping. Dark shades. Headbands. I told Brother Rod, and every now and then, I would say, well, well, well what's going on? And then they say, Jesus. Oh, oh okay, all right. And then they go, hoo, hoo, hoo. I mean, Tupac couldn't have did no better. I, it, was, it was, you know, I guess I'm just always a thug city. You know, the, you know, and uh, I didn't talk to the pastor today, but he's not a good friend. But I, I'm, I, I, I guess I'm just not in into into it like that, you know. Yeah, uh, that's the right one, pastor. That's it. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, and the reason I'm sharing that because I heard last night, this morning on the news that in Houston, eight people were suffocated. Y'all know you most of y'all heard that at that big rock uh, rap rap concert last night. And the people were pushing so hard at the concert yeah. that the people were being suffocated. And listen at this part. The people that were dying couldn't even drop. Uh, one man said he knew this person was dead, but they, the body was like this. There were 50,000 people. And, uh, and, and I know they were going to have a good time and enjoy themselves. And, and my heart really go out to them. Man, anytime somebody die, I go through something like that, my heart go out to them. Because I've been a lot of places where I should have been dead. Oh, sometimes when y'all see me show images of my passion, I don't know. It may not realize, y'all just bad. Real bad. Oh, I was bad. I, 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 I blushed myself at times when I think about how bad I've been. And if it had not been for God's mercy and grace, yeah. hallelujah. Okay, thank y'all, and I do apologize for sending so many different messages. Listen to what Paul said in Romans 1. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. Now I want you to notice here, Paul was talking about God's wrath. I know you're wondering, well, what does this have to do with uh, this message? Uh, well, in Romans 1, that's what Paul is going to address. 
Paul is going to address the fact that something went wrong with what we call manliness. And even though Paul is going to give a long list of things that went wrong, Paul stressed the fact that at the root of the problem was that people begin to lose their identity of who God intended for them to be. And you know, when you lose your way, we have a lot of people today that are losing their way. When you lose your way, you begin to act out in ways that God never intended. So Paul said that God's wrath is revealed uh, toward people. Now notice what he said. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Let me translate that. These are people that know that God is calling them. They know that there's another way. And they have this truth. But they hold it in righteousness, meaning I know the truth, but I'm going to live another way. Because that which may be known of God is manifest not to them, but in them. Did you know that no matter who you are, God talks to you? Let me say it again. Every one of you here today, God is talking to you. The question is not whether God is talking. The question is, will you respond? In the day that you hear my voice, God says, harden not your heart. So Paul here is talking about a people that knew a better way, and yet they refused to go that way. He said in the same Roman 1, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, so they are without excuse. Now notice Paul here is going to talk about creation. And Paul is going to take us back to how God first set things up. And Paul said, but the way God first set things up, he put an awareness in us of these things. And he said, so we don't really have an excuse to go contrary to the way God has called us and say we're going to plead ignorance. So Paul is talking about the people that knew their creator but refused to respond in the right way. He went on uh, uh, to say, and I'm going to skip down to where it says, For this cause God shall give them unto vile affections. And then now here we go. Paul is talking about people that did not know God, uh, uh, did not want God, but knew of him. They knew the truth, but they pushed the truth aside. And then from there, and this is how Paul ordered. All of a sudden, Paul, uh, uh, Paul flipped the script. He went from talking about unrighteous people that know the truth and won't respond to it, that know that they're the creator, but ignore the fact. And all of a sudden, in the same writing, he changed. And he changed and said this, which is amazing how he changed it, uh, that God gave them unto vile affections, for even the women did change the natural use unto that which is against it. Wait, wait, Paul. You were just talking about people not embracing the truth. Paul, you were talking about people that holding the truth and unrighteousness. Now all of a sudden you change and Paul said, yeah, because I want y'all to know that there's a connection between unrighteousness and the way we change and, 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 and act out of character. Paul said there is a, a, a connection and that's what he wanted to stress. And then he didn't stop there. And then he, he had, he, and notice he said, and likewise. Paul said, look, now that I'm on this subject, let me, let me get to the heart of the problem for y'all. And Paul is going to list a lot of different sins. He's going to talk about violence, fornication. He's going to talk about lying and meanness. He's going to talk about all these things. But Paul said, let me show y'all what the big problem is. We not acting or seeking to be who God has called us to be. And did y'all know when uh, Adam and Eve was introduced to us as male and female, did y'all know that? Again, I'm not necessarily talking about homosexuality. I'm talking about when God first made us, the Bible says, this, 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 before God named them, God said he made them male and female. So Paul said the, a big problem today that is creating other problems is people are refusing to acknowledge him that made them and, and refusing to acknowledge who he made them. Amen. And likewise also the men leaving in the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseeming. And I know we read that and we talk about homosexuality, LGBTQism, but, what, but, but there's a greater message that Paul is talking about here. Paul, is, Paul wants us to see that a lot of what we see going on right now in our country and our nation 
it starts with the fact that people are ignoring who God made them. See, a lot of times we're trying to get people to be, do something and, and be something, but we're trying to leave out the creator. Amen. We're trying to leave out our purpose. And each of you today, you have a purpose. You're not an accident. You are made by God, for God. He has a purpose for you. He knows your name. He knows how many strands of hair you have on your head. He knows how many tears fall out of your eyes. God knows everything there is to know about you. And Paul said, but when we get on the subject of unrighteousness, I want y'all to understand that there is a identity problem. And Paul said uh, that as a result of people ignoring who they are, and this is the scary part, this includes everybody, not just if you gay or whatever, this is the scary part. Paul said when you get people acting out of character like this, it leads to other things, and eventually what happens and then here comes the scary part. Our theme is, where are the real men? Yeah. But here's the scary part. Paul said, when you get a group of people and they start acting like this, and they start going along with it. Let me say it again. There are a lot of people acting out. We see it all on the TV now. Some, some people think it's cute to see men hugged up. Sometimes old gray men hugged up. You know... Uh, 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 and, and, and some of these commercials now, they have men. I can't tell who they are. I'm not even saying they're gay. Right. It, it's just so confusing. Right. And so Paul said, when you start seeing all that happening and people going along with it, Paul said, that's it's a sign that God is saying, you, you won't even be who you basically supposed to be. And y'all other people going along with it. Paul said, you know what God will do? Uh, and even as they did not like to retain. Let me read it again. And even as they. Now who do y'all think that they is uh, talking about? People that are gay? No. Nope. That's not what that Paul is saying. When I read this, I said, oh Lord, we've been, well, well, we read this one. This one talking about gay people and homosexuality. The they is talking about everybody. Everybody. There comes a time when God said, look, I'm looking at all of y'all. And the mess that all of y'all are going along with, I'm going to turn y'all over. Who? Gay people? No, God said everybody. Because in Romans 1, it, it starts with this, then it leads to other stuff. It starts with this, but it leads to other stuff. And God said, I'll give you over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with homosexuality? No. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, and wickedness. You say, well, what that got to do with the question at hand? Did you know in order for us to go along with a lot of things that we see happening right now on our TV and in our communities, you have, to, you have to twist your mind. You have to go along with lies. Did you know that? Uh, and a reprobate mind is when God said, you know what? I see everything you're thinking. I, every, uh, uh, you, I see you figuring up your bills. I see you thinking about uh, what you're going to eat tomorrow. God said, I look in your mind because I made the mind. Yeah. But God says there's a thought process. There's a way you can think. And you can harden your mind so much that I will eventually give you over to a reprobate mind. When you become a reprobate, you lost and don't even know it. You blind and can't even see it. You hurt yourself and can't even feel it. Lord, please help us all. I'm not here to fuss today. I'm here to say, y'all, we all need help. The Bible says, examine yourself, else you become a reprobate. And I'm afraid today that a lot of 
people, that, and I'm not talking about gay people today, even though some might think a lot of people today are starting to go along with mess, laugh at mess, be entertained by mess, and not realize that it, they are twisting their mind and they're contorting their mind and they're becoming a reprobate. I'm telling you, a reprobate is somebody who see one thing and know it's the truth, but they embrace a lie. Let me give an example. Today we are told, I, if you see a man, and if that man tell you that he's a woman, even though you're looking at a man, everybody knows he's a man. But in your mind, you're supposed to go along with what people tell you they are or who they are. You understand that? And even uh, recently, I told you North Carolina, they, uh, 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 they, 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 a lot of, they, they canceled a lot of venues in North Carolina because uh, they passed a law that said men couldn't go in the bathrooms with women. I mean, they're doing it now. A lot of times, you're in the bathroom now, you're in there with a man, you just don't know it. Y'all do know that. I, I, I know most of y'all know that by now. Because by law, you can't demand a man leave out the bathroom if he tell you he's a woman. But imagine in North Carolina, they boycotted saying that men couldn't go in the bathroom with little girls. That's not right. That's hurting that person's feeling. If Bruce tell me that, that he's Susan, no matter, even though my mind see Bruce, y'all understand what I'm saying? Y'all people are doing this right now, aren't they? And God said, when you start going along with things to a degree, it warps your mind. And one of the greatest things that's affecting our mind, according to God, God, in, in Romans 1, Paul started with the fact that men were backing away from being who God made them to be. Y'all, see, a lot of people don't understand this, that there are a lot of men that just don't want to be men no more, but they're not gay. One of the most favorite, famous examples of, of, of a person, our theme today is where are the real men? One of the most famous examples of a man that decided to change his mind was uh, Bruce Jenner. Now, Bruce Jenner was, a, 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 he and I was near the same age in 1976. He was our hero. Bruce Jenner on all the weedest boxes. He, he won the, the decathlon. Bruce Jenner. I mean, he made it on the weed in box. He was viewed as the man of the year. He was viewed as a man's man. And, and people celebrate, y'all, when I was, uh, back in the 70s, when I was younger, this was how we viewed a man. As ordained by God. But Bruce Jenner decided that after he'd been married three times and have six children, he said, y'all, listen, I'm not gay. And, and, and he'll tell you he's not gay. This is what makes him so unique. And a lot of people that say they're gay don't like him. But I'm just, I want you to understand that there's a spirit coming over our nation. And Bruce Jenner is one of the best examples. This man was married three times, have six children. But one day he said, y'all, I'm not Bruce no more. He, uh, he said, I like women. I only want women. He's not, he's telling, I'm not gay. He said, but I, I, I like to be, I like to look like a woman and have a girlfriend. And most of us know him today as Caitlyn Jenner. That's Caitlyn Jenner today. Where are the real men? That's confusing. And I'm not here to hop on him or pick at him. I'm not interested in doing that. I just want to show you where we're at. And it's beginning to affect our mind. And if you're not careful, you start saying, oh, but well, that ain't hurt nobody. Well, you know, when people living like that's them. And, but don't you, but I'm, when God said to Paul, don't you understand a lot of this stuff that's going on, when you begin to go along with it, don't worry about trying to condemn people that are living this way. They're condemning themselves. But when you start going along with it, it's going to affect your mind. It's going to be a domino in your life. Amen? You cannot, hallelujah, uh, 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 be neutral on it. 
you cannot say, well, that's just them. And uh, uh, in fact, may I tell y'all today that most people are afraid to even address this issue today? You can't have honor find nobody uh, on television to stand the children. If you're a man, be a man. If you're a woman, be a woman. And it's and and it's and it's confusing. And the sad thing about it is, a lot of people today are afraid to even acknowledge that God made a man a man, or God made a woman a woman. Y'all, our society is going downhill, and at the root of it is. We as a people are rejecting what God set up and afraid to say whether it's corporations, it could be ministers, athletes, everybody just about is afraid to stand up and say, well, where are the men? Who going to be the examples? Who going to take a stand? You know, in private a lot of times when you ask people, what makes a man a man? What would you tell yourself? And by the way, the list I have here, you know, they, different people ask you, well, uh, uh, what makes a man a man? I'm going to tell them the top of this piece of, well, you know, he got to be married, have a girlfriend or something. You, don't have, you, you never have to get married if all our brothers get married. You don't have to have a girlfriend. Amen. Jesus wasn't married. The Apostle Paul wasn't married. But a lot of times we think about a man. Our perception of, of, of a man in leadership. And y'all, we need some real men now. Oh, if there's ever been a time we needed men to stand up. I'm, so you have to be married. Some people say, well, if a man got to act rough and tough. Every man don't act rough and tough. And, and I remember when I was a little boy, they used to say, I looked like a little girl. That bothered me, you know. It did. But well, what, what I could do, I tried to draw kind of my voice so I'll make it heavy. What y'all talking about? You know, I tried all kind of stuff. You know, but I had to live with it. But I, I learned you, every man is not all this, you know. Uh, you know, he has a well chiseled physique. And I can go on down the list, but. What we often view as a man is different from what God would say. But I will tell you this. There are certain things that's missing today, and Lord Jesus, help us. Y'all, our communities are a mess. Our schools are a mess. People are just going crazy. And I, as I will show you today, according to the Bible, one of the first problems is it's getting harder to find men that will stand up and lead. And we need to pray, Lord, raise up men that will stand up. See, first of all, I remember when I was a little boy, uh, we need men because uh, uh, little boys emulate. Little girls emulate. I always wanted to be like my daddy. I love my mama, but, you know, I, just, you know, I, I love being around my daddy. Uh Little boys, little boys need role models, don't they? A little boy need to learn what it is to be a man. And it takes a man to do that. I know today we have a, a thing where they have two daddies. Y'all come on, that's confusing. Two mamas. And I'm not telling you to go break down somebody's door and say that's not right. But I'm telling you, you better guard your mind. Because the devil will get you to twist your mind. And you'll be going along with stuff that's completely wrong, and after why you think it's completely right. Lord, please don't turn us over to a reprobate mind. So there are certain things that a uh, 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 God appoints men to do. Amen. One is to be a role model. Any of y'all brothers ever had a man you looked up to and say, well, I want to be like, hopefully you did. It's all right to love mama, but ho I, hope you, you, uh, I hope you had a male uh, a role model in your life. But uh, not only that, uh, a lot of times uh, when it comes to our sisters, the average woman, children need a role model. If a, if a woman's going to be in a relationship and marry, she wants a, a, a man that will really be a companion. Sometimes us men folk can uh, uh, forget that, don't we, honey? Sometimes us men folk forget that. Well, boy, she shook her head mighty fast over there. 
<laughs> but, you know, I won't go down the list, but uh, they ask women, uh, what do they uh, uh, want from men? And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but it's interesting what uh, 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 women expect. You know, they want com good communication from the man. They love to feel love. They love sincere appreciation. They want loyalty and respect, brethren. Sexual arousal is different for us. That's what women say. We're not like a man. We love to shop. <laughs> and we love romance. Now, those are just some things. So men are not only called to be role models for other young men. Uh, we have a responsibility in the way we conduct ourselves toward our spouse. But in order to understand why this question, answering this question, is so important, where are the real men? I want to take you back to the beginning and show you what God set up. When we understand what God set up, then we can see how far we've fallen. And as I look at our uh, uh, society today, we've fallen very far away from what God intended. In the beginning, this was God's plan. God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So when God began to create, the Bible tells us at first it was just darkness. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. But God looked at it. Y'all know what God said? No, uh-uh. It said, no, this is still not right. There's got to be order to this. I've created it. See, God thought this whole thing out, even before he formed you and I. God thought it out. A lot of people don't want to acknowledge that he created all things. But, but God spoke to what he had created, and he said, uh, uh, let the firmament, uh, 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 and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the water. So God began to divide, and, 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 and this is the creative process. This is what God did in the beginning. When we ask you where are the real men, I'm talking about the men that are willing to be uh, the way that God would have them to be. Because there's something about male leadership. It does not take away from the, uh, the woman. It enhances uh, 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 the abilities of the woman. But so many people today just don't want to hear the fact that God is a God of order. How many of y'all know God is a God of order? Amen. That's why uh, I know if I drop a brick, I better move my feet. Because the law of gravity is going to pull it down. So God, after he made everything, God said, you know what? Now it's time for me to make man. I want y'all to notice something. When God was creating, before he made Eve, God made man. A lot of people take offense to that. A lot of people do. Well, did God forget about Eve? What was God doing? God did not forget. God was sending a signal. He was sending a message to us. And God spoke, and, and he said, I'm going to make the man first. Hallelujah. But uh, not, uh, and even after God made Adam, do y'all know who named all the animals? Adam. Adam named all the animals, and the Bible says a search was done, and everywhere they looked, they couldn't find nobody for Adam. Where are the real men? So here's this man walking around. I don't care what he had, something was missing. You don't have to be married. A man does not have to be married. I can tell you that. But he that finds a wife finds a good thing. Do we have any good things in here today? You ought to yell and throw your hands up and let you know something. I don't know. <laughs> so God... Say, it is not good for this man that I made to be alone. This is how it started, y'all. We've gotten so far away with men backing away from their calling. 
women doing the same. But this is how it started. And God said, I'm going to make a companion for this man. I don't want him by himself. And God says it's not good for him to be like this. So uh, that's what God did. I always say Adam had a wow moment. Adam had never seen a woman before, y'all know. Never. And Adam woke up and there was this beautiful woman. And Adam looked at her. And God said, okay, it's the two of y'all now. Now, that's what God first set up. Now, what did God have in mind? What did God expect from the man? What did he expect from the woman? When we look around today, there are a lot of people lying because there are a lot of people doing things that God never created them to do. And in order to have a clear understanding, you have to boldly go back. And let me tell you, once God gives you the right understanding on who we are, how we are, and how we're supposed to be, you're supposed to be bold enough to say, in the beginning, God did this. And no matter what craziness y'all coming up with now, I'm standing on what God has said. Amen. And I'm telling you again, each of you in here, you were de- uh, created for a purpose. There's not an accident in here. Every one of you in here, God made you for himself. Amen. And when you start with that, then you say, okay, if there's a creator, then there is accountability. So, God made Adam and Eve. Then God set up an order. And this is where a lot of people don't like. First, that God made the man first and appointed him leader. But y'all look what God did secondly. He didn't make Eve different uh, out of something different. God took the woman out the man. Adam called her bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And that's why the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, husband, love your wife or, or the way you love yourself. So God made the man first. Then God made Eve. Now, I, I, and this is the way I put it. He appointed Adam the leader. See that? But Adam and Eve of equal value because they came from the same place. They have different roles, but their work is one. Oh, if people would just embrace that today, it will change our whole communities. But you see, a lot of people struggle with this, but I don't know if they understand this or not. Y'all know where we get... Uh, uh, Guess where the children that go to school come from? A home. Guess where the people come from that you see out in the communities? It starts in the home. And the Bible clearly shows us that God had a blessed plan for us. Hallelujah. God said, you know what? I love y'all so much. I'm going to tell y'all how you got here. I'm going to tell you why you're here. I'm going to explain it to you. And thank God that there was a time we needed to understand our purpose and reason for being here is now. Because we're getting so many mixed messages. But from the very beginning, God had an order. Now, there are only two different creatures God made that are intelligent. God made angels and God made a man. Those are the only two creatures that God made uh, 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 that, uh, 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 that have what we call intellect. And there's the order. There was God first, right? And then after God, God made the angels. And don't fool yourself. Angels are much mightier than we are. Did y'all know that? Uh, 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 They're stronger. They they got us beat in every way. But in God's order, it was God, it was the angels, then it was us. That was the order. And in the beginning, everything was perfect. Even the devil was perfect. But y'all know what happened. The devil was so beautiful. He got lifted up. And, and guess what he said he's going to do? Now, I'm going to show you how we got to where we're at now. Uh, because God was the head in heaven. Well, guess who's the head on the earth? No. Man. No, remember when God gave man the, 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 the charge of the earth. Satan, and in heaven, Satan was one of the leaders, but Satan was not the leader on the earth. That was man. 
But Satan got so lifted up, look at how beautiful I am. Look at all my gifts. And he decided, I, I'm going to go up a little higher. I'm going to be the head. I'm going to be like God. So Satan is, and y'all, see, again, God is showing us how we got where we at. He shows us our purpose, but God also would say, now let me explain to y'all why there's a mess today. It started with an angel that rebelled and decided he wanted to be like me, and there was war in heaven, the Bible tells us, and in this great war, Satan was cast out, and here we go, here we go, and guess what he was cast out to on earth, and when Satan was cast on the earth, y'all know what was still working? Man being the head of the earth, Adam and Eve doing fine. God told them to have a family, y'all, enjoy your life. All that was going on. You know what the devil said? I'll fix that. Mm -hmm. I got kicked out of heaven. The Bible told, tells us I got one word in, uh, in red. Somebody tell me what that word is in red. The, when the devil was thrown down to the earth, he was full of hatred. Guess who, who for? Every one of y'all in here. The devil hates you. He hates God. And he hates you. And he will get you to act completely different from the way God made you. And guess what he'll tell you? Well, everybody got to have fun. The devil trying to kill you. So we see that because Adam and Eve listened at the devil, they fell and messed up, didn't they? You ever messed up in your life? All of us have. But this is what God really intended. I had to do all that to show y'all that God made the man for the woman. And if, if it had stayed all right, this is how it would have been, y'all. This was God's intent. If you want to commit to somebody you do, you spend your life together, you have a family, you uh, 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 train your children the right way, this is what, and, and a lot of times I see a men today, and, I, and I'm telling you, start with the man. I see a lot of men today don't, uh, I don't even have this vision. You know, we got a lot of players today. But very few people that want to be committed. But from the very beginning, this is what God had for us. I don't know about you, but I have found out that my life goes a whole lot better when I let God. When I let God direct my path. Amen. Some of the saddest times in my life is when I took it upon myself to do things the way that I want to do it. But Jesus, even when he was on earth, Jesus pointed right back to this same thing. Because it, it, oh, if we just would have listened to God. Oh, if we just would have ignored the devil. And did what God said do. But y'all know the good news is... Even after the fall, there's still hope for you in a good relationship. There's still help if you want God's help. Even though we're in a fallen state. But a lot of times people want to blame God when it's not God. This is what God set up. The devil stepped in. But you know what? What God set up has not changed. It just people got two problems today. Somebody say two. two. Listen to what Jesus said. Now I'm going to show you the problem. Our theme today is where are the real men? And you said, but I, I, I don't see what they got to do with me. You got everything. Because how you answer that question as a man or woman determines a lot on the choices you're going to make in your life. Listen to what the Lord said, and I'm going to show you the two problems people got today. Jesus, but from the beginning of creation, God made them, number one, male and female. For this cause shall the man leave his father and mother, and here's number two, and cleave to his wife. And the two shall be one flesh, and what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Those are the two things, the most, first two things God set up. First two things. <laughs> See, that sure we got a problem. You know, it's bad when you uh, 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 um, I like that commercial where the man trying to teach old people not to become their parents. I, I love that commercial because they always be talking about me. Yeah, and I like the one where he said, okay, plane ticket. 
And everybody flap up the paper. He said, oh, no, oh, no, oh, oh, no, this is a problem. Well, we can say the same thing about us. When you struggle with one and two, as, as people are doing today, we know you're going to have trouble with the Bible. Because the first two things God set up was, number one, male and female. Remember, he made it out of me. And you know the other thing God said it was, number two was, y'all know what cleave mean, get married. And those are the two main, y'all think about it. That's what's happening in our nation right now. People are struggling with one and two. I see it all over. And y'all know the scary part, a lot of us today, a lot of us today see people mixed up on male and female. They're mixed up on cleaving. And we pretend, and your mind get twisted. You say, what you mean? To become a reprobate, remember I tell you, you have to see something and know it's not true. And then your mind pretend like it is. And over a period of time, your mind get twisted, and God will give you a reprobate. Let me show you what I mean. Number one, male and female, right? Now, according to the Bible, from the beginning, God made them male and female, right? Y'all, they have tried everything they could do to find something different than male and female. And know what? It always come up, the DNA always come up male and female. I could, uh, uh, I could have breast transplant, get me a long hair piece. I can put on a mini dress, high heels, and lipstick. And everybody said, I sure the funny looking woman. <laughs> But guess what? If I went to the hospital and they drew blood, guess what? It's going to come up. Male. They have tried all they can. You can cut stuff off on your body, add stuff on your body, but God said, nope. There's a man and there's a woman. And don't you let nobody tell you anything different, okay? Don't let nobody play with your mind. You don't tell people, I'm not lying for nobody. If you a man, I'm a, you a man, I'm not going to play with my mind because when you start twisting your mind like that, it does something to you. Where are the real men? You all the stem say, no, if you're a man, you're a man. I'm just basing it on God's word. And the other thing uh, 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 that's close, uh, that is, is associated with this is number two. And uh, we do a lot of pretending here. For this cause, uh, shall a man leave? Listen to this. For this call, Shelley, who? You know what the Bible there is doing? It's putting on the responsibility of the man to commit to the woman. Oh, boy, that felt good. Most people don't realize this. God expects for a man to stand up and say, you are mine. Will you be mine? Thank you. I will marry you. For this call, Shelley, amen. We all wear the real men. We got so many men that they won't commit. And people say, well, isn't that cute? No, it's an abomination to God. But y'all know what we do? And not only that, near the other end, you got men that's marrying men. Both of them are confusing. All on the television, that's what you've seen on your TV. People moving in together. But let me tell you, you can't pretend. And say, so, oh, y'all husband and wife. They play with your mind. Ooh. Uh, oh, you husband and husband. That's what Romans, that's what Paul said. Paul said, y'all better be careful. Amen. You might say, oh, I'm not doing that, but I'm in agreement with it. Paul said, God will turn you over to a wrong mind. Y'all, you better guard your mind. Because once that mind gets messed up, I mean, that's it. Lord, please help us to take a stand. So according to the Bible, the man's supposed to leave mother and father. The man's supposed to take the initiative. But what we are seeing today, y'all, it just is mixed up. It, and it's all over. Every place I go now, people are just moving in together. And, okay, we're going to pretend like you married or two women together. We're going to pretend. I can't do that. Can you do that? If you can, check that mind. If you can. You said, boy, this is a deep message. That's right, because we're in the end times, and y'all, these are perilous times. Things have changed. When I was young, I never thought I would see this like this. I remember when it wasn't like this. How about you? Something is changing, and it's changing for the worse. In fact, God in his words, so you know what I'll do? I'll tell y'all about the past to explain your present so you can see the future. 
God says, I'm Alpha and Omega. God says, I'm the beginning and the end. And I want y'all to understand that because I'm God, I can point y'all back to the bank or, or to your past to sh explain you what's going on in your present and, when, and prepare you for the future. And one of the things God tells us in his word, that as we come near uh, 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 the end of this age, according to God, a lot of, of men are going to begin to back away. And as men back away, y'all, and it's happening right now, God says, I want y'all to understand that it starts with the man. And in Isaiah, the third chapter, this is what God said. God said, I know that the man is supposed to go out and, and, and take the leadership role when it comes to the commitment and being the role model for other young men. God said, but I'm telling y'all what's going to happen. As this world gets closer to the end, and let me point y'all back to the past to explain your present so you understand your future. And God said, what's going to happen is uh, men are going to start running away from being who I called them to be, and it's going to create a vacuum. Y'all, God is something else. He said, uh, 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 what's going to happen is you're going to see men fleeing from their assigned roles, women with great contempt rejecting these roles, and young people disregarding these roles. Yeah, that's what we got. Like the Bible talks about the last says, perilous time has come, and, 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 and that people will be dis disobedient parents. Y'all, what is happening is men are running away from their role as a leader, for those that are married as husbands. Uh, role of the father, running from it. Yeah. And y'all is creating a vacuum. It's creating a vacuum. Hallelujah. Uh, in the book of Isaiah, God said, you know what, it's going to get so bad that men are backing away. And God said, and really I'm explaining this part to you. People always ask the question, why are things getting so bad? I'm going to tell you. Why, ooh, I never thought it would be this way. Well, God tell you why. He said, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge, the, uh, the prophet, uh, and all these supposed to be men that are leaders, God says it's going to get so bad and red, and I will give children to be their princes and babes to rule over them. Well, God, what happened? God said the problem was the men stopped standing up. The men stopped uh, being the, uh, the leader that I appointed them to, and all of a sudden the children were running the house. Oh, and and uh, what else, God? God said, and it's going to get so bad as men sit down that it's going to be meanness or uh, 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 abuse in the same chapter. You say, well, why, well, 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 why are men backing up? What caused this? It's just something this way God set it up. And I know people trying to work around, and you might have friends and family trying to work around or doing it the way God said do it, but all we've seen is it's getting worse and worse. Worse and worse, more killing, more violence, more everything. They're shooting little babies. Now, I, oh my, oh boy, I just, it makes me want to cry when I see how many little babies they have shot in the last few weeks. And I, and, and I don't want to depress you, I just want to impress you with the fact that God knows it all. And he explains to us, especially for the men folk, God is saying, men, stand up and be men. Don't be afraid Take a stand, and the people shall be oppressed, every one by, uh, uh, by another. And, and, but this is the sad part. And by the way, these are the verses by one by one, okay? This is one chapter. You understand what I just said? I'm just going down the verses. God said when men, where are the men? God said when the men back up, this what happened. God said, now you see this man, look at he running away from all his responsibility. And when somebody comes and a man should take hold of his brother saying, oh, hey, you look like you'll make a good a leader. Thou has clothing. Be our ruler. You, we want you to be the leader. You know what the man say? Make me not the ruler. I, I don't want to be no leader. Uh-uh, not me. No, no. And God said, that's the problem. Men not standing up. And he said, as a result, of men not standing up, it's right where it's at now. Ask my people, children are the oppressors, women rule over them. Oh, my people, that they which lead thee, cause thee the error. God said, You see, now that y'all see the problem, the men. It starts with the men. It starts with the men. That's why in Romans 1, remember when I read 
Paul started off, he's going to talk about all these other things, but he started off saying, y'all, the big problem is men are not standing up being the men of God. But then something else happened. Sisters, this may surprise y'all, this part. According to the Bible, as the men start backing away, uh, I know we have what they call desperate housewives. Well, according to the Bible, women are going to get desperate. Why? Because no men hardly standing up. And so the women going to come up with this idea. And in that day, seven women should take hold of one man. Wow. Seven women. Say to one man, take us. You ain't got to give us a cent. We'll pay. We'll take care of everything. Uh, 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 we'll, uh, we'll eat our own bread. Wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name. We're desperate. Oh, boy. See, when you get desperate, sisters, you do things, you, you, you lower your standards. Y'all, I didn't write this in the Bible. Our God did. Because he wants us to understand what the problem is. He said, uh, 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 and, and uh, you have women all on dating apps now just desperately trying to find somebody. Okay, well, if you want to marry me with this, just, 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 just come on so I can show I got somebody with me. That's desperate. But I heard Sister Bailey say pray. Amen. Amen. Humble yourself and pray. Even when you don't feel like it. Amen. Beloved. I'm going to fast forward to something because it's something I want to end with. This is a desperate time, and I want to leave a thought with you to show y'all, again, just how much God knows everything and how God is seeking to strengthen us in these last days. He said, watch and pray. The main reason why we know the end is coming is because men are sitting down. I know that sounds odd. That sounds like it cannot be. But that's the main reason why. And what God did, God said, let me tell y'all what's going to happen as y'all world in. And hopefully when I get through this part, this final section, hopefully you understand why we titled this message, Where Are the Real Men? There are two things God tells us about just as the world is going in. He tells us about the rapid increase in knowledge, and he tells us that people are going to get worse and worse. Those are the two things God said, look, when you see knowledge increase, that's half of it. But when you see the man run away, Refuse to be who I've appointed him to be. God says, I'm telling you, you better count and start counting the seconds. Beloved, we are much closer to the end of this world than most people realize. But this is one of the clearest signs. You know, number one, I, 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 um, I, I use this a little illustration. Often the first thing God tells us as the world comes to an end, knowledge will increase. People run to and fro. And I show this all the time. That's what God showed the prophets. Y'all, that's happening right now, isn't it? I read the scripture that just for the world in, uh, notice what happened there. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. That's where we at. But there's something else God tells us. God says, the other sign that will show y'all how close you are to the end is when you see y'all communities, your families, and your nation get back like it was during the days of Lot. God said, when you see that, I'm telling you. Well, let me read it for you. When the Lord was asked about the end of the age and, and uh, uh, what it would be like, Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did 
eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But on the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Look at that 30th verse. Even thus shall it be when the Son of Man is revealed. The Lord says, when y'all see it get back like it was in the days of Lot. Okay, knowledge increasing, people run to and fro, but he said, I'm going to give you another sign. Look at what happened to Lot. And when y'all see that, y'all know that my coming is even at the door. We often have told y'all before, just before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he went by Abraham's house and he said, Abraham, I'm getting ready to go visit Sodom because I heard that's a wicked place. And uh, Abraham, when I go down there, I'm going to destroy them if they're wicked. Abraham said, Lord, if you just find ten, we spare. And the Bible says that God came to Abraham. He looked like a man. And he had two other men with, with him. We know there were two other men with angels. But God actually walked on earth and appeared to Abraham. Even though now, uh, somebody said, well, was, was that really how God looked? No, God just appeared to Abraham as a man. He taught Abraham. And Abraham said, Lord, if you find ten people, we spare Sodom. God said, I will spare him. Now, let's step into Sodom. So, God departed, and God sent the two angels down to Sodom and Gomorrah. And I want to point your attention to this, that a lot of stuff was going on in Sodom, all right? It was, uh, when the angels arrived in Sodom, and this is, by the way, remember Romans 1, I, I read it for y'all when we started, where, in like manner, this burn this, this. What Paul was really talking about, what, what we're reading here, he was describing Romans 1. So, any time you read Romans, the first chapter, you can always associate it with what we're reading here in uh, Genesis 19. So, when the angels got to Sodom, y'all, there was so much violence out in the streets, like in our streets today. But the angels walked on past that. They said, okay, boy, it's a lot of mess going on in here Sodom. We're going to walk past all this violence. People killing people, robbing people, abusing people. They kept walking. Then they went a little farther in Sodom. It was really getting bad. All kind of sexual conduct was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. But the angels kept on walking. You see, a lot of times God will excuse some things, all right? In our lives, God don't always rush and do everything. But this is an interesting story because what we're looking at now took place in one night. Y'all say one night. What we're reading right now, this is not years, this is month. The angels arrived and this is, they arrived at night. Lot told the angels, he said, fellas, y'all can't stay out in the street. Come to my house. And we're told that the angels walked past this. But judgment was not yet passed. Then we're told that they headed toward Lot's door. Walked past all this. And the Bible said that they arrived at Lot's house. They went in and ate. And here we go. Y'all, this is the same night. God said, I want y'all to learn this lesson well. Look at all what's going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. But God says, if I can just find 10 people there, I'll spare everybody. Y'all, God is passing judgment on our nation, on our family, and most people don't even realize it. You can be so involved in video games, uh, uh, party in sports, and, and by the way, I like sports, I like good music, I like good food. I'm not telling you don't enjoy life, but you can be so uh, uh, involved in stuff in Sodom, you don't realize that judgment is about to pass. So the angels walked past all of this until they got the Lot's door. And when they got the Lot's door and went in the house, everything that y'all just saw happening there in Sodom all of a sudden, God said, now I'm going to show you just how bad this place has gotten. When I tell you they were reprobates, out of all the stuff that God skipped over, he's not talking about the fornicators, the murderers right now, 
the thieves, he walked past all that. But when they went in Lot's house and the men of the city found out that Lot had allowed these men to come in their house, the Bible said they showed up at Lot's house. And the men of Sodom surrounded the house round about both old and young from uh, the people from every quarter. And they cried out, whoa, listen, where are the... Right there. Y'all, this is the way God did it. In one night, God let the angels go to Sodom tomorrow. In one night, they walked past all that stuff but when they got to Lot's house, God said, now, I'm going to show y'all how messed up the people are. The men not standing up being men no more. You see what God highlighting? God said, the men are not standing. Where are the men that will stand up? But instead of them being there, they hollering out, where are the men? You saw the change there? And right then, the angels told Sodom or told Lot. They said, Lot, that's it. There are not even no men here no more that'll stand up. And that's what God was saying. It got so bad in Sodom and Gomorrah that no men, no men except for Lot, men were not standing up. Hallelujah. And that's what Paul was saying. Paul said, when you get to a point where the men are not standing up, these men, they showed up and they showed up for the wrong thing. Then God was right there looking. God said, all this other stuff, yes, I know it's going on in Sodom, but I'm going to show you all the big problem. God said the big problem in Sodom is that the men are so messed up and mixed up, they won't stand up and be who I'm calling to be. For all of our young men here today, I'm going to tell you, God has called you to be a man. Hallelujah. God has called you to stand up. Hallelujah. And be who he has made you to be. Hallelujah. And God pays close attention to what we as men, as leaders, what we do. God said, yes, there was a lot of mess in Sodom and Gomorrah. But God said, when it got to the point where I couldn't even find no men that would stand up. Don't you see what God was trying to show us? Uh, hallelujah. All this time, uh, hallelujah, had passed and God could have said, okay, I, I, I'm going to ignore this and I'm going to ignore that. But on that night, God said, I I want y'all to come with me and I want y'all to walk through the streets of Sodom and Gomorrah and I'm going to show you that in Sodom there is all kind of mess going on I'm going to show you that there are drunks and liars and religious devils all up there in Sodom but God said but the, the base of the problem is the men are so messed up the men are so crossed up hallelujah that they can't stand up and be who I've called them to be. And as I look around the day in our communities, I ask the question, where are the real men? You see, God has called us to be both the leaders and to be the protectors. God has called us to set forth the standards. Hallelujah. But sad to say, hallelujah, a lot of times there's got to be that blessed wife, that blessed woman that say I'll stand up. I look in the church today and I ask where are the real men? You can't hardly get men to come to church no more. Most churches today are full of women that's praying and pressing and trying. Hallelujah. And the man that's staying home calling himself a real man. But I want you to know when God gets involved you see in Sodom and Gomorrah we know what happened. God said that's it. God said tonight y'all in less than 24 hours after God got there the fire fell. What was God showing them? God said I've been long suffering long enough but now I can't find men that'll stand up. As I said you don't have to be a married man just be a man of God. Amen. Hallelujah. 
You don't have to have muscles. I never had a lot of muscles. But you can be a man of God. You don't even have to be smarter than your wife. Hallelujah. To be a man of God. Hallelujah. You don't have to make the most money in the house. But God is saying, I want men that will stand up and do what I call them to be. I want men that will fulfill my purpose. Where are the men that will commit themselves? Hallelujah. But so many today don't understand that when God set this thing up, God set it up so it'll run all in our community. You know what a good relationship is? You got commitment and love and respect, obedience, fairness, submission. That's what's in a marriage on both sides, not just the wife side. And when we can get those things in our home, when we can get those things in our home, did you know that it will spread out to the family? Lord, help us to be real men. Hallelujah. As the Bible tells us, watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quit. Or the word quit means fight. You like men. Hallelujah. Be strong. Let all things be done in love. Hallelujah. Every man today is called of God to be a man of God. Y'all say amen. But what the devil would have men think that they can't be who God called them to be. But hallelujah, I found this out that God will help you. Hallelujah. Oh, God will help you. Hallelujah. You see, God said the real man is one that's committed. He's loving. He's respectful. He's obedient. These are the things that make a real man. And God has purpose in his heart that if we are willing, he's able. Today, I offer prayer. I want to offer a special prayer. And for all our young friends, I make sure y'all to come up. I want to have a prayer with y'all before we close out. Know, before we you know we normally go out and get something to eat. But before we do, I, I, I think I ask all y'all to come up.